Hello brain lovers, Gregory here from the Brain Academy. So we're in the middle of the summer, well, closely, little by little, we're getting to the end of the summer holidays and uh, regularly my kids get bored. <laughs> my son particularly he can just walk around the house and be like, oh, I'm bored. And uh, whenever that happens, I'm glad, I'm actually glad. Daddy, what should I do? And I go, what, you're bored? Yes, good. And he goes like, really? Duh. Why is being bored good for your brain? Well, the thing is, being bored leads to just staring at nothing and being bored. <laughs> and that leads to daydreaming. Which activates the default mode network. Now, what is a default mode network? It's been discovered early 2000s and well, it's slightly controversial. There's not a 100% agreement on the whole default mode network thing. However, it's been discovered that some parts of the brain, when we are not focused, when we are not working on a certain task, well, certain parts of the brain become more active than when we are focused, etc. So it's a network that activates when we're on standby mode. Interestingly, it includes parts of our frontal lobes and the hippocampus. Hippocampus having a crucial role in memory. There are other regions as well involved, but let's just look at those two. Those two seem most important or most interesting to me. Now you have to know <laughs> that our best thinking occurs when we are in that default mode network, when we are daydreaming, when we are not actively working on a certain task. And daydreaming has several things in common with actual dreaming, with what we do when we're asleep. Tonight, I'll show you how dreams are prepared. There's on one hand this free association of thought. First, we put in some random thoughts. As we silence our inner critic, which creates these unexpected associations. You have to look at it like when you're doing a puzzle, you know, piece by piece, and at one point you're just stuck. And then, I love for you, but it's a tactic some people use, and they just randomly go trying out piece by piece by piece. It's really boring. And then suddenly, well, there's one piece that fits. Well, basically it's what happens when we're in this default mode network. We just randomly go and make free associations in our mind, and then suddenly, oh, there's something that fits. And then you go like, hey, my God. That's like a brilliant idea. And that's exactly what happens with the famous aha erlebnis, the eureka moment, you know? We get brilliant ideas when we're taking a warm, relaxing bath or shower, or you're going for a walk. I myself, when I'm in my car, I just turn off the radio, uh, don't put any music on, just to make sure that I get as bored as possible. So my mind can just freely do its thing, work its magic. and come up with new ideas, new concepts, associating thoughts, ideas, concepts. I really cherish those moments in the car as it helps me advance on problems I'm working on. So, and I actually have talked about this before in my courses, but also with the famous LMNOP. Remember LMNOP. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out my TEDx talk. So the P stands for pauses. And this is exactly what I'm referring to. Our brain is just not made to work non-stop 10 hours a day. without a single break. It just doesn't work. We're most productive when we work for small chunks of, let's say, 20 minutes, and then you take a break, five, 10 minutes. And then again, a chunk of 20 minutes can be 30 minutes. Some people go up to 40 minutes. But the longer you stretch that time of focused, highly productive work, well, the less highly productive it will be. So whenever I get stuck on a project, on writing a piece or anything, I just put it aside or let it rest. It can be for minutes, it can be for hours, sometimes days, sometimes months. The longest I've been <laughs> stuck on a project was for over a year and then one day suddenly boom, hallelujah I got the solution took the project back up and I finished it in a week so the way it works or the way I work at least is I work on several projects at the same time so I work on one and I let the others rest and whenever I have an idea that comes up breakthrough on one of those others I just write it down and keep it for when I will be moving back to that project so that works great with daydreaming, with wandering, letting the mind wander. It works fantastic with sleeping. So just before you go to sleep, you think about the problem you're facing. And then you let your brain work on it during nighttime, make those associations. Let me sleep on it, baby, baby, let me sleep on it. 
So just before going to sleep, it's just basically a little reminder to your brain that it should work on that given problem. So, basically our brain works. It's never resting. It works all the time. It works when we're daydreaming. It even works when we're sleeping. And you can harness that. You can make it work for you. That's what I do. Boredom leads to daydreaming, leads to our best thinking. It leads to higher creativity. It leads to better problem solving. And so I use it actively, consciously in my work routine. So what about you? Have you ever tried it? Leave it in the comments below. And as always, like and subscribe. Check out some of our other episodes. And if you want real stuff, go to brainacademy.com. Join over 300,000 students and start using your brain better. Brain out. Sharpen.